Hello and welcome to Inside Edition to discuss national, regional and international issues in depth. With the aim of advancing the interest of the local investment community by promoting and maintaining the highest standards of professional excellence and integrity, as well as contributing to the development of the local capital market and professional skills and actively promoting the Chartered Financial Analysis, the CFA program, the CFA Society Bahrain was established in 2006 and kept proceeding in the path of success, which led to be the second largest CFA society in the Middle East and a winner of the first place in the NGO's category of Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa Award. To know more about the society and its work, we are pleased to be joined here in the studio by the board member of CFA Society Bahrain and investment director at Ithmar Development Company, Ziba Askar, right after this. Welcome back. Joining us here in the studio is Ms. Ziba Askar. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you for having me today. Congratulations. I mean, recently I was there at the award ceremony. Um, uh, you have won uh, the NGO's category of Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, or the society has. And uh, that's such a big honor, especially uh, being one of the leading uh, societies within the civil uh, societies that are available. So what can you tell us about this recognition and what it meant to the society? Okay, I would like to start by extending our sincerest gratitude and appreciation to Her Royal uh, Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa for her continuous uh, leadership and uh, efforts and initiatives in supporting the advancement of Bahraini women under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad uh, bin uh, Isa Al Khalifa. And I would like to also thank Supreme Council for Women for their continuous guidance, encouragement, supporting us continuously along the way. Of course, uh, being a non-profit organization, CFA Society Bahrain is being run and managed by a group of volunteers. Yeah. And uh, I would consider those volunteers really the jewels of the society. So they are dedicating a lot of their time, their energy, spending weekends, countless hours working on the society and receiving such a prestigious award and getting national recognition for all the effort that these young youth talented uh, people are putting in the society is an extremely rewarding and fulfilling experience. And it is uh, really encouraging us and motivating us to give even more. Yes, that's amazing. I mean, uh, one of the main things that really promote volunteers is the experience they get from uh, people such as yourself and people that are within the working field in high ranking positions. What can you tell us about um, what these volunteers actually um, uh, do? How did uh, this award really become or how did you attain this award as the CFA Bahrain Society? Okay, so CFA Society Bahrain has been uh, established since 2006 and we are the local member society of the Global CFA Institute, which has a presence of over 150,000 around the world and uh, over 150 societies globally. Mm -hmm. So it is really uh, affiliated with an international, <coughs> extremely professional uh, institute. Mm -hmm. Now, since the society started, there has been numerous initiatives and we are focused on building the professional talent in mm -hmm. the country and uh, we deliver value for our members by providing a lot of educational events, networking opportunities. We launched a couple of uh, initiatives. One of them is uh, Mutamahan program. A Mutamahan program is dedicated to bridge the gap between the fresh graduates and the employers. And uh, we are pleased to say that we have been able since its launch in 2014 to train over 300 students yeah. and uh, and I have to mention this program is fully uh, for yes. free yes and uh, CFA Institute has been a major fund provider for that program since 2017 <coughs> Tenkin has been supporting us as a strategic partner so Mutamahin program was um, run by the CFA society leadership and the uh, some of the members and because it was for free and the students who came on board realize the amount of effort and care they are receiving from the different people who are associated with the society and uh, it is extremely rewarding yeah. that these young people who got associated with the program got inspired by the spirit of the team, the mm -hmm. spirit of the Mutamahan team, the leadership that they are giving from their time, mentoring them, guiding them throughout yeah. the programs and because of that we have managed 
to get a lot of our volunteers from the Matamahan program. Oh, right. So I'm a great believer in, <coughs> in giving to receive. Mm. And Matamahan is a, is a walking proof that shows that the more we gave to these talent, the more we received from them. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Especially that um, the CFA is internationally recognized. So yeah. it's not just the training they're getting, but also the recognition and the standard, the international standards that gives them the opportunity to even like go out of Bahrain and later come back and so exactly. on and get more experience. Um, since its establishment 14 years ago, the CFA Society has been committed to accomplishing a number of missions. Um, they did this by adopting several essential values. What can you tell us about these values that you have? So our core values are around ethics, mm -hmm. integrity, authentic authenticity, uh, competency and inclusion. Yeah. We believe that uh, our values is what defines us. And uh, we aspire to be sticking by those values and achieving the best we can mm -hmm. for our members, for the, for the community that we are part of. And um, I'm very pleased to mention that the Mutamahan program has received uh, international recognition. In <coughs> fact, it is uh, being considered to be replicated in several societies outside of Bahrain. And this gives us extreme uh, pleasure that it is an idea that was born in Bahrain, mm -hmm. but it would uh, be implemented in other interested societies. Great. Yeah. yeah. So from the values that we have, um, it um, made us get connected with like mind professionals yeah. and other people in the society, even from um, different institutions, financial institutions, uh, governmental regulatory authorities. And they have been giving us as well. So they would dedicate a lot of their time to come as speakers in our events, to, um, to train some of our, uh, in some of our programs. Yeah. And they do all of this without charging us anything. Yes. So it is also you feel that you are spreading the, the spirit of giving and giving back to the society. That's amazing. It's like a community service yes. thing, but it actually fills into the economic yeah. uh, sector. Uh, well, Bahrain has been known to be a hub uh, for the financial sector. I mean, uh, you're talking about the Central Bank of Bahrain, NBB, Itmar, all of these huge institutions that are or have their headquarters here in Bahrain. How does the CFA contribute to them and how do they contribute to the CFA? What is that cooperation that is there? Yeah. So the CFA Institute, uh, the designation of being a CFA charter holder, you will have to go through a rigorous uh, program, mm. which would take uh, th passing three levels of examination and a minimum of uh, four years of ex relevant experience yeah. to be to be awarded the charter holder. So, in terms of the technical knowledge, there is no question about the the skill set of the CFA charter holders. The way we work with the financial institutions is uh, we have um, we have uh, sponsors. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll just like to mention the name of our sponsors. We have Ahli United Bank, who is our platinum sponsor. We have First Energy Bank, who is our gold sponsor. We have uh, in the silver uh, sponsorship category, SECO, Khaliji Commercial Bank, BBK, mm. Kuwait Finance House, uh, and uh, GT Abdel, uh, Grant Thornton Abdel Al. Huge names. Yes, and we have also received uh, support from Temkin. Mm. We have received uh, support in uh, one of our events from Aberdeen Asset uh, yes. Middle, uh, Middle East. So in terms of our connection, Initially, actually, this was one of the things that we had to work very hard as a society because we had to depend on our network to spread the work word and bring in all uh, the support and connect with the other um, stakeholders in the community. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you mentioned um, a moment ago that uh, some of the support that you receive are through um, high-ranking officials that basically give training and so on. But what else can you tell us about the structure and how um, within the society itself the branches collaborate with each other? Okay. So the structure of the society, we have a board of directors that consists of six members. Mm -hmm. Of those six members, we have 50% who are women. Mm -hmm. And then we have formed committees. Yeah. In those committees, uh, we have given a chair position for the different uh, 
volunteers who are running them and each of those committees have a team mm. so they have deputies which is part of our succession planning and they are supported with other volunteers the manpower of the society including the board is over 40 individuals wow. so for a for a civil society run on on volunteer base uh, i personally believe that's an impressive it figure is. Is. because uh, each one of these uh, volunteers is really the pillar of the success of the society without them we wouldn't have been able to achieve what we have mm. Achieved. Absolutely, and especially like uh, as you said, I mean, you have these uh, institutions that are supporting you as well, and it wouldn't be possible if they, the volunteers weren't so successful at the same time. Um, the society instituted a series of programs and initiatives. You um, talked about Mutamahan, but I know you have a couple of other programs. What can you tell us about those? Yes, we have uh, a program that is called uh, Qudwa. Mm -hmm. It's a mentorship program, and uh, the mastermind and the founder of that program is Nurhan Adlan, and uh, she is one of our uh, board members as well and she is uh, the chair the she's the liaison person who uh, looks after the program mm -hmm. the career portal and uh, as well as the um, mentorship program of the society so uh, the Qudwa program it's a mentorship program in which we have the more seasoned and experienced members of the society yeah. are helping out and mentoring the candidates of the program right. and those who are who could be also charter holders, but with less years of experience. Mm. And it is a one-on-one -on -one, um, collaborative um, uh, relationship. AUB, Ahli United Bank, has been one of the main supporters of the program. The way the program functions is that the mentors undergo a formal training program and they do actually get certified. The relationship is being evaluated on a regular basis to ensure that the mentees are getting the maximum benefit out of their mentors. And um, this has also received the attention of the Global CFA Institute. Right. And they are asking a lot of questions and getting a lot of uh, details from what we have been uh, doing about this. Right. In addition to that, we have uh, a research challenge uh, program. All right. So the research challenge program, we engage with the different universities and we take up teams mm -hmm. who they are being guided in order to conduct uh, valuation of some companies right. and then they compete on Bahrain level. The winning team will complete on the regional level oh. and once they win they complete or compete on a, on a global level. So this one also encourages us to engage with university students and um, get them involved into um, into the 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 financial world er as early as possible and yeah. understand how to do technical evaluation and so on in addition to that we run a lot of uh, educational programs the idea behind the educational programs is we don't only want to adapt and know what is going on we mm. want to be part of shaping the industry yes so for example uh, when um, the whole fintech uh, was coming yes, up yes. we we made a session about fintech and regtech mm. to make sure that our members know exactly what's going on and what is it that they can do in it right. when the vat was introduced yes. we run a full workshop about vat and the technical issues including the changes that happen in the financial standards reporting standards we also did sessions on that now with the sustainable finance with the environmental social governance ESG coming up it is also something that we are paying attention on and a part of that is because uh, the CFA Institute mm. is a thought leadership yeah. so they are really up to date and actually leading the transition that is happening globally. Yeah. For example, on the ESG, they have conducted many research mm. and uh, our role as a CFA society, we need to make sure that our members are there, they know exactly what is going on because that is how we build the competency. Right. Yeah, right. that is how we uh, make sure that uh, our credibility stands with the employers and with the with the community around us. Mm -hmm. And I'm very pleased to say that for the Mutamahan program, the graduates of the Mutamahan program are actually being headhunted. Wow. So many employers, uh, I mean, I would like to consider us to be a major suppliers of fresh graduates in mm -hmm. Bahrain. Mm -hmm. So they are approaching us because they believe that the, whoever went through the Mutamahan, it's not only about their technical skills. Right. We know they are technically good because we actually screen the people who enter into the program. It is about 
building in them the soft skills mm -hmm. that will enable them really bring up their full potential when they step in the, the employment and the career world. Right. So when they enter, they already have a step ahead. So the, the employers find out that most of these yeah. uh, graduates are actually kind of as if they know what to expect yeah. and what is happening there. Yeah. Yeah. So them being part of the CFA society is actually their first step towards that expertism or that uh, being exactly. uh, hunted in the expert. When, y when the researches were done, as you said, um, by uh, the society, were there on a local basis, on a regional basis? Was it a more broader uh, aspect when it came to? So for the research challenge, we pick up companies that are listed in Bahrain, mm -hmm. okay? So those are the companies that we conduct um, evaluation for. Right. So it is like the decision of buy, hold, or, or uh, sell those yeah. shares. And, yeah. and it is mainly about building the technical skills for how to conduct a research about a company, how to do Perfect. projections and be able to uh, um, have a value for those companies. Perfect. Yeah. Um, part of the high standards that are set uh, by the EDB and by other societies that take care of the economic uh, aspects of um, the country is, uh, of course, the international licensing. Um, most of the financial experts do have to have certain licenses when it comes to the international arena and also in Bahrain to be accredited and so on. Do you also give career, um, uh, let's say, advice when it comes to what kind of licenses they should get, what kind of training they should get in order to fulfill the gaps that are in the kingdom? Definitely. So. Where the career advice that we give is, we do have, by the way, um, career day. Mm -hmm. And uh, the career day, we have done it this year, we have done it last year. And uh, part of that is uh, giving career advice on how to grow in your career. And the focus was for uh, the, the people who are at different stages in their jobs. So the person who's just starting their job has different needs than the person who's in middle management than the person who is on a more executive and senior level. Right. Many of the Mutamahan um, program, because they are the ones who are just starting their, their career life and or about to start their career life, they ask us for advice. Mm. What is it that we should do? Should we do the CFA? Should we do the other kind of professional programs? Or should we go to the MBA route? Yeah. And the way we advise them is, to understand what is the, they are looking to or aspiring to achieve mm -hmm. and what they believe their strengths are in. We definitely encourage the CFA charter yeah. holder, but there are some other certification associated with the CFA right. Institute. So we do give them that kind of guidance as well. That's amazing. Um, how does the society benefit from the uh, international outreach activities um, uh, and cooperations with these global institutions that we've mentioned before? So in terms of the uh, international benefit, um, as I mentioned, CFA Institute being a thought leader, we get a lot of um, ideas from them on where is it that we go. And in fact, as part of the initiative of the CFA Institute was uh, the future of finance, right. which they have um, a focus on women in investment management. Right. They even provide scholarship for women. Mm. So uh, when we have in the CFA Society Bahrain formed the Women Inclusion Committee, we wanted to align ourselves with the broader CFA Institute right. and at the same time support the Supreme Council uh, for Women in its initiatives. Right. Now, in terms of what they provide, uh, they support us with funding. So mm -hmm. they have a project funding, for example, for the Mutamahan program and some of our events. They do provide us with funding mm -hmm. and uh, they do send us speakers so international speakers that attend our event and that is a great training source in fact last year we made um, a regional diversity and inclusion event and the cfa institute has actually designed one full day workshop training for the women leaders not only in bahrain but regionally mm -hmm. and actually uh, we have uh, mem members from the region who flew in bahrain to get trained in that workshop. So again, this is an initiative that was born in Bahrain and yeah. it would be replicated in other areas in the region. Amazing. So all of these supports and on top of that, they do send the leadership of the society for training internationally. Okay. So there are events that take a place in the Far East, in Europe, yeah. in the US, and the, we do get invitation to attend those events. Mm, in order to cover all of the aspects uh, needed within the field, I mean, the new things that are coming up. Yes. Um, 
one thing uh, that we talked about behind uh, the screens is a lot of people don't really know what the CFA does, what does the institute does, what does it provide. Um, do you think more awareness is needed? And if so, can you give us some? Well, in terms of what the CFA does, uh, we have uh, been very active in social media and we have been connecting with um, a lot of uh, different stakeholders. So be it universities, be it uh, financial institutions. The target, I would say that we need to probably get engaged more with the universities. We conduct roadshows in some of the wow. universities to attract the Mutamahan right. um, uh, candidates probably investing more time in that, and um, that would be a, a key to engaging more with the society. Yeah. Um, every successful institution has faced obstacles. Tell us about the obstacles that the CFA faces or faced. Yes, in terms of the obstacles we have faced, uh, initially it was really the talented human capital. Mm. Now, the society being run on volunteer basis, and especially that the leadership are working full-time basis, they have families, so you can just imagine the time constraint and pressure on each member and uh, how much it takes to actually give back. Yeah. So we managed to grow the society, as I mentioned, that now we have 40 um, manpower, and this has helped us tremendously. And one of the major suppliers of volunteers is the Mutamahan program. Yeah. So this is one of the challenges that we initially face, and that's why we managed to, to grow exponentially once we were able to build that human capital base. Mm. The other thing is uh, the volunteer turnover. So volunteer turnover, life happens. Sometimes people have to step down mm. and uh, realizing the importance of that, we have built in a succession planning. So whether be it the board members or the chair, uh, persons of the different committees, they have deputies, they have a whole team that is being groomed yeah. in order to be able to pick up those uh, positions. Another challenge that we faced was the financial resources mm -hmm. and uh, we are extremely appreciative to all of, of our sponsors who really believed in us yeah. and uh, getting to believe in an institution that just started and helping them, it, it means a lot to us because without them we couldn't have achieved uh, all of this. Mm -hmm. Another challenge that we faced in the earlier days was uh, securing VIP speakers. Yeah. And I'm very pleased to say that we have managed to overcome that by the strong network of the leadership of the society. And uh, now most of our events are being hosted by extremely high uh, yeah. VIP speakers. Amazing. Yeah. Um, the field has a lot of new um, economic institutions coming uh, in, um, international ones uh, in specific. How would you do, do, how will you overcome these obstacles when uh, tailoring to these new institutions that are in the country? Like how, how will you um, overcome these obstacles in the future? How do you see yourself overcoming those? We will uh, continue to deliver what we are delivering, but mm -hmm. in the same time, uh, it is important for us that um, we don't only, so the programs we have, for example, the Mutamahan, the Qadwa, these are programs that we aspire to have them going out uh, internationally. Of course, building the competency, continuing to building the competency, we continue to raise the bar mm -hmm. for the members that we have in our society. In terms of financial resources, we continue to expand our outreach and uh, uh, we are really uh, cost efficient when it comes to managing our events and our uh, activities. I bet. Yeah. My last question to you before we end today's um, uh, the show is, what are the future plans of the society? What's coming up? What should we look forward to? Okay, so what we are looking uh, forward to is um, uh, having won the award uh, one is one of the things. So we will be focusing on uh, developing women and advancing women. And I would say especially in the uh, C-suite and the board level. Yeah. So that is something that we have some plans for and uh, we will be working on it. We are looking at <coughs> affiliation programs with universities. Mm -hmm. So um, that is something that is on the CFA Institute level and we'll be working on that as well. 
and uh, we would like to strengthen our relationships with the universities as well. So besides the affiliation program, strengthening the relationship in order to be able to attract more, um, engage more with the graduates and as you said, to make them more aware about what is uh, going on. Of course, introducing um, the knowledge base for our members for yeah. the sustainable finance that is going on because it is a global initiative that right. is taking place and further build the competency of uh, our members, of course, and deliver value for them. Yes. If you have, um, or if there is someone watching the show now and says, okay, I want to be part of the CFA, what should they do? Well, uh, w they can visit our website. Uh, it is uh, CFA Society uh, Bahrain. They can just uh, Google it, they will find it. And the membership, we have two kinds of membership. <coughs> we have the uh, affiliate membership and the regular membership. The difference between them is in terms of the voting. Yeah. So the affiliate members, they have to have passed um, CFA level one examination okay. to be able to be an affiliate member, while the regular members would have completed the three, the, the three levels already. Mm -hmm. So they can just visit our website and all our criteria is listed over there. Perfect. Thank you yeah. so much for coming today and answering all of our questions. Thank you. And congratulations again. Wish you so much luck in the future. Thank you very much. As we said, um, the CFA is not just a society that uh, basically harbors the uh, economic experts uh, of the kingdom and the regional experts, but it also gives that kind of ethical support that every si single expert should be looking for. We thank you very much for watching us today, and we'll see you next week in another episode of Inside Edition. <laughs>